What do you think of courtroom dramas? We don't have enough of them. <laughs> we got plenty of them on TV. And we do. I, that's probably why we don't have enough. We, we got oh. like eight different series of courtroom dramas. I know. Dramas. Okay. What? How many movies are on this list? Law and Order. Uh, Law and Order. Boise. <laughs> Law and Order. <laughs> what goes on in an Idaho, Idaho courtroom? Oh my God. Okay. Uh, they uh, Total Film came out with the 50 greatest courtroom dramas. <laughs> oh my God, 50. Okay, all right, just go. Oh, God. so I'll start. I'll start listing them, and you can tell me, you know, if you if anything strikes you. Okay. I remember really liking this movie, number 50, Jagged Edge. Oh, uh, yeah. I mean, of course. I mean, good flick, directed by. Okay. Do you remember? Oh, um, but it's written. Wasn't it written by Joe Esterhazy or? Mhm. Mm-hmm. I don't. I don't remember who directed it. I don't. Richard Marquand. Oh wow! Return of the Jedi was, guy. His yeah, his follow up to Jedi. I think it was. Mm-hmm. Forty nine North Country. The Char- Charlize Theron. Okay. Norma I, Ray. Kind okay, of I can see that on there. Forty nine. Okay. Number forty eight. A dango ate my baby. I cry in the dark. <laughs> <laughs> Number 47, High Crimes. Jeez. Really? Yeah. You mean there's nothing else that could find <laughs> that's, uh, that's the Ashley go, Judd go Morgan on, Freeman. Jamie. Go on, now I'm really curious. If high Crimes. <laughs> Jim Caviezel movie. Yeah. Uh, number 46, Rules of Engagement. Okay. You know, I never did see that. That's, a, that's an interesting movie. It's a, that's know. a William Friedkin. Yeah, right? yeah. Number 45, continuing on the Ashley Judd, Morgan Freeman courtroom drama. No, no, this is Tommy Lee Jones and Ashley Judd. Oh. Yeah. Double Jeopardy. <laughs> I think <I'm> Ashley <laughs> Judd is going to monopolize this on this. That marks the only time you'll ever see the movie Double Jeopardy on any list. And then something way back at number 44, a little Oscar-winning movie called Reversal of Fortune. Wow, okay. Number 43, The Life of David Gale. Okay. Which I always dug. I never, I knew people that despise that movie. I never. I wouldn't say I despise it. I mean, I, I mean, I thought it was interesting. I mean, I'll, I'll say that, but I, I don't, I don't remember to be honest with you that well. So, number 42, The Hurricane. Hmm. Um, which uh, many people, I think, a lot more people saw the sequel, The Perfect Storm. <laughs> Number 41, Aaron Brockovich. Okay. And that has to be one of the greats, right? Yeah, no, Aaron Brockovich, I mean, yeah, definitely. I mean... Especially on a list of 50. Yeah. (laughs) Number 40, A Soldier Story. Yes. yes. Okay, all right. Um, Just keep going. Keep (laughs) keep going. (laughs) There's no suspense if I just don't stop at all. I know, I know, but... Number 39, My Cousin Vinny. These two oh youths. Oh my god! <laughs> that really, I mean, I'd put that on that list. That's a good quote. I'm just really curious. <laughs> There's nothing that says every movie has to be a serious. Oh, okay, drama. you know, it's okay. I it's, thought it was a courtroom drama, but okay. I've never seen a grit before. Yeah. Okay. Uh, okay, number thirty-eight, absence of malice. Okay, yeah, I could see that one definitely. Is it Rit? Did Rit do that? Martin Rit? I think. Yeah. I think so. Miracle on 34th Street, number 37. Well, the original or the remake, or both? The 1947. Okay, all right, all right. Wow, that's all. That's good. Okay. Oh, wow, this is a very interesting list now. Okay. <laughs> a movie called Separate but Equal in 1990, uh, 1991. Mm-hmm. Comes in number... About the first major victory for the civil rights movement. Was, well, movement I hope was, Losing Isaiah is on this list. Sydney Poor. <laughs> 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 oh well, that's what inspired Joyce. Number th- number thirty five, the Lincoln Lawyer. I that definitely deserves to be on the list because it's actually a good movie. So number thirty four, I never looked at this as a court drama, but uh, in the bedroom, does that have court stuff in it? I, I wouldn't think of it per se, but okay, it des- because of the given the, the nature of the story and the ca- yeah, it deserves to be on there. It's like seeking justice. Yeah. 
Uh, the Rainmaker, yeah. number 33. I love The Rainmaker. The Rainmaker is what, it just shows you what a master director can do with a John Grissom novel. Really. Yeah. yeah. It's a great movie. It is. 32 is The Client. Wow, George okay. Schumacher. Okay, yeah, I, that's, I like that movie, so that's a, it should be on there, yeah. 31 is Sleepers. Mm, okay. That's a good moment when De Niro lies for them. Yeah, it is. Yeah. A Time to Kill is number 30. We're getting into these 90s adaptations here, bestsellers. Here's another one. 29, A Civil Action. Yep. Not, didn't really, I don't know about you, but I mean, I read the book and I saw the movie. I mean, neither, it didn't really stand out, but I guess no. given the list, they probably felt anything that took place in the court should be on this list. <laughs> didn't Steve Zalian write and direct that movie? The script, I think so. I think you're right. Intruder in the Dust from 1949 and comes at number 28. Wow, okay. At least they're going far back. It's diverse. Thank God for that. Uh, okay. Kramer versus Kramer, number 27. Only at 27? Yeah. No, I'm re- okay. Movie from 1936 called Fury, starring Spencer Tracy. Oh, that's Tracy. A famous, isn't that? That's a Fritz Lang movie, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, it is. It that's is. a famous movie, yeah. Uh, wow. Director Fritz Lang was restricted by MGM, who demanded that he make his protagonist innocent and bolt on a happy ending. Mm. Primal Fear, number 25. Okay. Richard Gere. <laughs> Number 24, The Passion of Joan of Arc from 1928. I mean, it definitely is. I, I wouldn't necessarily call it a courtroom, but, <laughs> but yeah, I guess so. If we're, okay, wow, this is really stretching the... What would you choose as your favorite number one courtroom movie? I always like that scene. You're going to laugh at me, but I always like that scene, The Untouchables. Yeah. When he tell when he, when he, you know, he just, you know, when he turns he, to Kevin, the guy, like, what did you tell him? And I said his name was on that list. I always think that's one of the great courtroom scenes. Well, yeah, a movie with two courtroom scenes, but it would qualify for this list, apparently, uh, looking at their their choices. Number 23, The Cane Mutiny from 1954, Humphrey Bogart. Oh, also A Few Good Men. Speaking of A Cane Mutiny, you've got to put A Few Good Men on here. Number 22, A Few Good Men. (laughs) (laughs) I'm like the amazing Kreskin all of a sudden. I mean... Their only quibble with a movie, do lawyers really have teeth as perfect as Tom Cruise's? They might. Tom Cruise doesn't actually have perfect teeth. His his smile is crooked. <laughs> his teeth are like leaning over to the right of his smile. They really are. That's why he wore braces a couple of years ago. I don't... Oh, okay. I didn't. I did not know that. You only only hear it here. That's why. That's why people listen into the show. I know really about dental on his. I'll find out what toothpaste to use this for next week. <laughs> uh, Amistad number twenty one. Okay. That was on cable the other night. It was just as boring on cable as it was in the theater. I want me free. <laughs> I walked out like, I want me refund. Uh, number 20, Witness for the Prosecution, 1957. Oh, that's, yeah, that definitely should be on there. Charles Lawton. Number 19, Michael Clayton. Okay, yeah, definitely. Number 18, from 1966, Paul Schofield in A Man for All Seasons. Mm-hmm. People versus Larry Flint at number seventeen. Thank God. Good, good court. Yeah, good, good call. JFK number sixteen. Mm, good, that's a good one. The accused at fifteen. Okay, definitely. I love this movie. Number fourteen, presumed innocent. That's a good one. Definitely should be on there. I love that movie. Philadelphia number thirteen. Okay. 1967's In Cold Blood with Robert Blake at number 12. Mm hmm. Judgment at Nuremberg, 1961, number 11. I can tell you what my favorite courtroom drama is, probably when I. I, I, I would think my favorite is The Verdict. Yeah. It's a great movie. So it, so it has to play somewhere on this list. So Anatomy of a Murder is number 10. And that's, a good, that's a great one, too. Just came out Criterion. Mm hmm. The Name of the Father, number nine. Mm-hmm. I, I have no problem with any of these so far. So, Paths of Glory, number eight. Mm-hmm. 
1960s Inherit the Wind at number seven. Okay. Well, absolutely. I mean, it, yeah, it, yeah, it, yeah. You can't have this list and not have some of these be on there. So e- e- even even the the play Inherit the Wind is yeah. like one of the classics, you know. Uh, number six is The Crucible from 1996. Mm, that's an interesting choice. Interesting movie. Breaker Morant, number five. Yes, definitely deserves to be on this list. Number four. Oh, man. To Kill a Mockingbird, number four. Definitely. Yes. I mean, yes. now what's that should, ahead of, that should ahead be number one. Yeah, that's it should really should be. But what, I mean, now I'm really curious. It's ahead. Number three, you're out of order. <laughs> and justice for all. Yeah, yeah, of course. Number two, wow, okay, of course, Twelve Angry Men. Wow, what's number one? It has to be the one I chose, actually. I, it, it better be. Yep, number one is the verdict. Mm-hmm. So number one and number two are Sidney Lumet movies for the best courtroom movies. Well, you can't ask for you know. There's there's a man who understood procedure. Yeah, really. Yeah, did. you're right about that. 